Disc number two, I know the one y'all been waiting for, uh, how to tune up your equipment, your machine, how to set each uh, machine up as a liner or a shader, uh, certain little modifications you can do. Um, in the last video we talked about how to uh, get your machine up and running out of the box. Uh, but not discussing how to make it a liner or a shader. And we were doing that, uh, getting it up and running out of the box with parts that it had came with. I'm not adding springs or adding anything to it, just using the existing parts that it came with out of the box to get it up and running. Okay, and sounding, you know, halfway like a machine. Um, in this video, we're still gonna use the same import, you know, bin frame machines. Uh, this is a different machine, but um, it's the same import. Uh, that most people <clears throat> who would buy in this video probably probably have Okay, so that being said this is probably the only time you're gonna see my face in this video because I believe that these videos should be about machines and tools and not about my Kool-Aid face, okay, so Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this machine in, power it up. We're gonna get a listen to it. Before I ever touch any machine uh, and, and uh, attempt to tune it up or repair it or anything like that, I always visually go over it, okay? Uh, and what I'm looking for when I do this is just uh, anything that catches my eye right off that is wrong with the machine. Such things as pulling the armature bar down at the armature bar nipple, looking at this armature bar and seeing if it's in a nice uh, horizontal line. If it has to dip below the rear spring seat to touch the first coil, uh, you know, that's a problem. In this case, we have that problem, okay? While the armature bar is down, I also noticed that the rear spring uh, gap is a little more than it needs to be, okay? Uh, that's two issues I see with this machine right off the top of my head, <clears throat> okay? And uh, not to mention, it's just ugly, all right? <laughs> But anyway, um, that's one problem that I see, okay? Uh, I see also that, you know, this um, armature bar is not one that I would uh, care to keep on there if I'm gonna set this machine up as a liner, uh, which in this video, we're gonna set this up as a liner, okay? Um, I also see, you know, contact screw is, is not dead center of the front spring. Um, so visually, you know, this is kind of like a pre-inspection, a pre-trip inspection, okay? Uh, which is fitting. Uh, I would uh, go ahead at this point and turn it on. <clears throat> okay, voltage isn't important right now, really. Uh, I just want to get enough voltage to run. I know it's not going to sound good. I know it's not going to run very well. That's not my concern right now. Just that it runs is what I want to know. All right, buddy, let's start the tattoo party. Anyway, sounds like crap. Okay. Uh, Yeeks. <laughs> no O-ring. Sounds like a jackhammer. Okay. Uh, O-ring will dead that a little bit, but anyway, uh, it still sounds like crap. Okay. So take a good listen. This is how it's, it sounds now. And just to be fair, what? Well, just to be fair, I will give it, you know, gap that's a little more realistic of, of what I'm going to set it up as as a liner. Okay. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Whoops. All right, that's that sounds. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and go over a couple quick tools that I use to tune up tattoo machines. Okay, in this video we're gonna be changing springs. Okay. Uh, liners always have short front springs, short rear spring, okay? Diving board, the farther out you go, the more it bounce. The further back you bounce on the diving board, the more rigid it is. Short front rear spring, good gauge of spring. It's gonna make a big difference, we'll talk about that later. Armature bar for lining, okay? 
Uh, this is a speed bar, okay? Uh, this is a fishing weight. <laughs> you don't want that on a liner, okay? There's no, no hollowed out point in there. This is hollowed out. It means it'll run faster, less work, short and buzzier. And, uh, same tool I used in the last video, armature bar alignment tool. This video, we're gonna use a spring tension gauge, okay? Only thing that makes this machine a liner or a shader is spring tension. I don't care if uh, you say, oh, my contact screw gap is right and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. If the spring tension is 700 grams, you got a buzz saw, not a liner. If the spring tension is 150 grams, you got nothing. It's not a shaver, okay? Spring tension is all that makes this machine a liner or a shaver, okay? Uh, Allen wrenches, and of course, I'll try to fumble through 57 different Allen wrenches before I find the right one because old habits never die. Spring jig. <clears throat> Okay, miracle of modern science. Helps you line up your uh, armature bar with your front and rear spring as you tighten them down. Okay, so you don't get this articulated bend in there. <laughs> this video I'm also going to use a multimeter. You don't have to. Okay, I recommend you get one. Twenty bucks. It's a good tool to have to uh, test and see what your power supply, what voltage is coming out of your power supply to your clip cord to your machine. Okay, because a lot of times you use these uh, power supplies uh, that come from, you know, different countries, their imports, um, and they're even your American ones. They can be off. Uh, and a multimeter will show you how accurate or inaccurate your power supply is. If it says 7 on a power supply and you put your multimeter probes up to it and it says 6, you know you're off by a volt. Okay, so that's important stuff to know. Okay, right out. Okay, um, coil shims. <clears throat> okay, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing, I'm, I could turn it on and let it run for 10 minutes and it'd take itself apart and that'd save me time, but <laughs> no, I'm stupid. Anyway, let's go ahead and take all this stuff apart. Um, I start with all the uh, front binding post and spring and armature bar taking that off first because I want to get to my coils. The coils are the center of this machine. They need to be right before anything else can be right. So we go right to the center, okay? Take all this other stuff off first. Okay. All right. And if you have the first video or watch the first video, uh, you should know what all the names of these parts are by now. Don't think you're super duper and want to skip ahead to to all the good parts. I just want to learn how to tune my stuff up and, and all that, you know. Be honest with yourself, start at the basics. You're only gonna cheat yourself. I already know the names of this stuff. So uh, don't cheat yourself. Um, make sure you get a good grasp on on names and, and importance uh, of each part, okay? All right, take my, uh, I'm looking for the oh, this right here. And these springs are crap, man. Uh, I got these new springs here we're gonna put on this to be a liner, but these are junk, man. These are like razor blades on the edges and super stiff and you don't even know what gauge they are. That's just, throw that crap out, man. Uh, anyway. Okay, now these things are off. I mean, you can take this off or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, matter of fact, I, I will take it off because it doesn't have any washers on there and we need something to uh, give consistent downward pressure on this vise uh, for the rear spring to be seated properly. So we'll take that out too. Yeah, we'll even take out the tube vise and locking that and the tube vise itself. Why not? Okay, rear contact post. Put that right there. All right. Okay, we'll continue to loosen these up now. <clears throat> Remember, keep your thumb on these coils because they snap easy on these import machines. Super thin wire, it's not even copper, it's aluminum, it just sucks. It's so inferior that the slightest thing you do to uh, 
put stress on this machine at all, I guarantee it's going to fail. Uh, and pretty much it's a failure out of the box anyway. Uh, my advice is save, save a little bit of money. Uh, and instead of being able to buy 15 junky import machines, buy you one good or two good machines, you know, you know, that uh, you shop around or call me and, and uh, you know, see, see what, what online comments are and things like that regarding the machine you're going to buy. Who waste your money. Uh, there's so much of this stuff out there that is just uh, catered to people who are trying to trying to uh, you know be tattoo artists or wanting to be tattoo artists and really thinking they're making good sound uh, purchasing decisions and they're not and they're playing on your ignorance and they do it intentionally. Uh, I hate wasting money on crap you don't need uh, and try to avoid that same mistake. Don't be in a rush. You know, what I'm showing you here today is good for an import machine or it's good for regular any coil machine tuna, okay? Uh, you can use it on the machines that I build. You can use it on machines that you build um, or import machines. Okay, I'll continue this video, I just edit it. <clears throat> okay, have the coils off. When we did our visual inspection of the machine to begin with, we learned that uh, improper coil height, first of all, was the main uh, problem with this. The armature bar and, and spring assembly had to dip below the rear uh, spring seat to uh, strike the first coil on the armature bar. It's wrong. So, we're going to adjust that first. But, since we have the coils off, a cool little tip is to, a cool little trick, is to take you some stainless steel, I mean steel pads, not SOS pads or anything like that with the soap in them already, you know, a real dipstick. Okay, get the steel wool pads, <clears throat> they're just steel wool, and you can get them like at hardware stores, in the paint department, and stuff like that. Um, really nice, get you a fine grade uh, steel wool pad. Take your little tiny, a little dab will do you. Okay, take your little dab off, roll it in the little ball. Okay, they have the coils off. It's a very cool trick with uh, steel wool. Uh, once you have the coils exposed like this, the core bottoms, you may as well go ahead and, while you're at it and drop in a little, uh, small little ball of uh, uh, steel wool into the uh, coil core bottoms. Okay, and you can go ahead and pack it down in there, you know, uh, with something plastic. Okay, to avoid uh, scraping or scratching inside the coil core. <clears throat> uh, now that you've done that, and we've looked at the bottoms of these. Anyway, okay, we've done that. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, coils back onto the bottom of the, uh, onto the machine frame. <clears throat> okay, and <clears throat> what we're going to do now is line the bottoms up with the, uh, the core uh, holes and the machine frame holes are gonna line those up. <clears throat> and uh, I remember before we got started that mm, there was a problem with the coil height. So we're gonna take some of these uh, <clears throat> coil shims uh, and go ahead and they're coming different uh, gauges and uh, according to whatever height you need to raise your coils to, you know, use a shim that's gonna get you that, that height. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and put a shim on the front coil. Slide your shims into the, <clears throat> into the, uh, under the front coil. <clears throat> use something uh, plastic like this uh, to center it all and, and take your uh, screws, your coil core screws, coil core screws, and for right now just screw it in there just uh, by hand just to hold, hold one of the coils in place so you can look on the uh, other coil. Okay. 
square them all up and, and use a different thickness for the uh, rear coil of shim. Okay. Same thing, slide it up inside there. Okay. Push it over with something plastic like that. <clears throat> and completely push it through the other side so it falls out. Not. Okay. Slide it up in there, tilt the coil back a little bit, see how I've got the shim. Putting pressure on the bottom of the coil and, and, uh, and on the top of the coil and it's squeezing that shim. Then I loosen it up a little bit. I just kind of slide this over uh, to line it up with that hole. Just like that, okay? And I take my plastic piece and I line it up in the bottom. Now that thing's in there, okay? You don't have to worry about this one because we've got the <clears throat> screw in the bottom holding it in place. Take this out, get your other coil core screw. And begin to slide it in there. Okay. fight me a little bit but it won't ever win never okay now those can hang there like that and they're fine they're not gonna bust or anything okay flip this back over and what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm going to look at these pull down on these screws okay so that everything's flush on the bottom I'm just going to look at them visually and see if the, the front coil core top is higher than this one by just a, a, a small amount, okay? And it is, <clears throat> okay? They want to take out. Okay. After I, you know, pull these down, I got to gather my fucking thoughts again. Okay, I look and see that the front coil core top is higher than the rear coil core top. And I could stand and put one more shim in the front coil. So, uh, a thinner gauge one. Uh, so that'll give me two in the front. There we go. There we go. Okay, two shims in the front. And, uh... <clears throat> One shim in the rear. Now we can shim and shim. You know I have to help. Okay. Now that we've got that, we'll go ahead and tighten these old rascals up. Snug them down real secure. Same with this other one here. And another point, I, I like to take these uh, screws and when at all possible, and not on the import frame because it's not worth my time, but I'll swap these out for uh, 8 30 seconds bolts that are you're able to screw in or screw out with a standard uh, Phillips head. Uh, or Phillips head pattern on the uh, on, the, on the, the bolt because <clears throat> I hate messing with Allen wrenches uh, of all varying sizes. When you swap those out with, uh, pause for you too. <clears throat> you'll appreciate that tip as you quit fumbling for Allen wrenches of standard size and metric size, and you know it's, you'll appreciate that. <clears throat> Saves you time. You can. Get a little better fit out of it when you snug it up with a screwdriver and everything just seems to be a little bit tighter that way and you don't strip off allen wrench heads trying to you know tighten stuff up that isn't worth tightening so like i'm doing right now this video is two hours in length and one and a half hours of it will be tightening bolts not really okay 
and it's tight. And since you have that steel wool in there, as you begin to tighten this bolt and you get closer toward the end of tightening it, it may become a little more difficult, but that's just because it's pressing that steel wool up into the, the very top of the coil. Uh, that little coil po core pocket in there. Uh, and that's another part where it will help with having a screwdriver. Uh, okay, you never do the second and the first one. Um, the screwdriver really help you know, get that through there. Uh, but you know it's it's good when, you, when it gets a little tight in there. Okay, there we go. These coils back on here snug and he's bugging the rug. No, okay. We're both in there. You can see our shims. Okay. You can see your shims in right in there is two shims. And in the back one there's one shim. Front coil always has to be higher than the than the rear coil. It has to strike the front coil first, flat and dead on. Uh, and it can't dip below this rear spring seat when doing that. You know, if your armature bar is dipping way down here to hit the front coil, something's wrong. Okay. Um, these are tight and they're on there. Steel wool inside. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, when I reassemble the machine, I, I start with uh, the. Um, you can go a couple different ways uh, for, the, for this video's sake. You know, I'll start with putting the rear uh, binding post on. And then I'll go with the uh, armature bar <clears throat> and uh, spring assembly, front rear spring assembly. Um, okay. Slide this over just a little bit. Okay. All right. Throw insulating washer. Remember your insulating washers. You do not want to ground out to the frame. Okay. That would be bad. My sleeve is just black one. Okay, and so I wash on the inside. <clears throat> okay, then we're going to put our solder lug over the rear binding post. Maybe. There it is. Okay. Put a rebinding post on. Just put it on that. Don't snug it all the way up yet. And there's still a few things we're going to do. <clears throat> and uh, Sure you get a good seat, seat those uh, insulating washers well all the way into the hole because if not they'll be cockeyed and not set straight and you won't have a good solid, uh, <clears throat> won't be good and solid when you tighten it up. Okay, that's on there. Everything's tight. I'm not going to go nowhere. Now, we're going to go ahead and set this here. We're going to talk about this armature bar and spring that it came with. The first big no no on this armature bar is the spring screw comes out of the spring screw pocket there, making the spring screw the first thing that strikes the coil <laughs> and not the armature bar. Big no-no. Big no-no, okay? This screw has to be inside this pocket. It can't come out. I can run my finger across here and, and I feel that screw. That's bad. It means that screw's hitting your coil, not the armature bar, the rear coil. Bad, 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 bad. Okay? Uh, this armature bar is it's all shaved on the side or something. <clears throat> this whole thing all together is bad. We're not going to use any of this, okay? <clears throat> what we will do is take a speed bar, okay? 
which is four lining. Uh, it's lighter. And it will greatly improve the this will greatly improve the way this machine performs. And I don't, and I don't mean greatly improve it by the way it performs by it's a great machine now. It's still a turd, okay? But it's not gonna smell as bad. It still needs to be replaced with something quality, okay? Okay, we're going to go ahead and go over in this section uh, springs. And I want to go over springs because even though earlier I said that the only thing that makes a machine a liner or a shader is spring tension, uh, spring tension is measured from here, from the armature bar nipple uh, being depressed. And that tension comes from this rear spring. Uh, so spring setups, uh, generally, if you want a strong hit, for example, this machine that I built is a liner, okay? Uh, you can tell because of the short front spring and a stiff uh, rear spring um, with a little less stiff front spring. That's just my preference. Um, the spring tension is still the same for my my shop i you know i run my spring tensions you know for a liner oh you know uh, 425 or so anyway uh, when you're setting up a machine to be a liner or a shader you want to take into account uh the, the stiff the higher the number on the spring uh the stiffer the spring um Find a good source to buy your springs and, and buy them from one source. You know what you're getting, you know the quality. Uh, you know, these springs oftentimes come with a finish on them that will wear off once you use it, but until it wears off, it generally throws up a little bit of a spark. Uh, you know, I take my springs and I heat them up and dip them in oil and finish them that way. Uh, but, you know, it'll throw up a little bit of a spark until it wears off. Uh, you want to keep the, it's just like a set of points, you know, you, you want to keep the contact screw and the front spring, uh, you know, get you a little fingernail file, like your wife uses or whatever, a little fine, fine grit sandpaper, and, and run up in here and just clean that every so often. Don't angle this out, don't file it down to an angle, keep this contact screw flat. You know, don't cut it at an angle or anything like that. You want it to hit flat on the spring. Okay, and you can see where this has already started to wear a little bit of that finish off, and that's good. Keep that black carbon build up out of there. That'll help it run better. Uh, but like I say, your springs, you know, come in all different gauges and sizes, uh, you know, depending on what your setup is. But this 20 gauge spring, this is a stiff old spring right here, and it's short. You know, I'll throw this on a liner, uh, you know, for example, for demonst uh, demonstrative purposes on this import machine that I've used in this video, I put uh, a little less stiff spring in the back, and the reason is because these coils are, are deficient. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, they're weak to begin with, so, you know, on these machines like this where things are already working against you, and you have inferior quality and parts. You don't want to run with such a stiff spring because it's going to take a lot more power for these dang inferior quality coils to, to uh, override the tension of the spring and allow it to come back up. Um, but rear spring tension is very important. Uh, space between rear armature bar and rear spring seat is important too because that tells you, you know, the more space you have between here, uh, the more... Uh, the less space you have between these two, the more rigid a, a, a balance you're going to have. So the more rigid, uh, you know, uh, the higher the spring tension. You know, so at any rate, spring tension is very important. The higher the number, the stiffer the spring. For a, you know, um, generally for a liner, you know, you want to run, uh, what I do is, you know, 
put a, a 20 a 20 gauge on the back or an 18 gauge um, and a little bit lighter say if I put a 20 on the back like this one here and I put a 16 gauge one on the front you know that's typically 20 or 18 is how I'll set it up or I'll do 18 and, and 16 or, or you know something like that it just depends on what I'm trying to achieve with my my tensions and my, my uh, hard hitting and also remember that you know this contact screw controls your speed on the machine that's the only control on this machine that you have is speed control this is opening this up allows the machine to run slower closing that gap up allows it to run faster the power supply uh, the more voltage you have the stronger the magnetic pull it pulls this armature bar down harder bringing the needle into the skin harder okay those are the only two uh, electrical controls you have on this machine the other controls come through your hand through uh, hand motion pressure speed uh, things like that um, but you, well, I, let me back that up you have another control on here but you don't really control it it's it's already set it's the capacitor that dictates the speed too of the, of the, uh, of the machine but um, contact screw is speed power supply is force of uh, hit strength of, of downward pull on the armature bar so at any rate the spring setups are really important on, on shaders you know uh this is a color packer but but you know i've got a, once again a stiff rear spring uh on this i've got a 20 gauge uh, stiff rear spring this is a color packer and i've got an 18 gauge lo uh, longer uh front spring on here um and uh, you know, shaders I'll typically set up like 18 and 16, um, you know, 18 rear, 16 front, something like that. But fiddle around with that for a little bit and you'll find that, you know, as long as your spring tension is correct, spring gauge uh, and setup for liners or shaders, you know, you can play with that and find different effects, um, you know, what your personal preference is. But typically, you know, 18-16 liner, 20-18 liner, you know, 18-16 uh, shader, you know, 16-16 uh, shader if you want. But maybe the spring setups uh, are really important. Um, you don't just throw the old spring on back there. And that's why I hate these machines that come that are import because they just put a stiff old steel spring on there with no number, no nothing, jagged, ragged, sharp edges. They're so non-uniform that, that uh, I just I can't stand them. Find you a spring supplier, uh, you know, and there's a few good ones out there, um, and stick with one spring supplier, okay? Uh, and and you'll greatly improve the way your machine and your artwork uh, turn out, okay? So, roll in, screw this down tight. What that does is it secures uh, the locking of the contact screw into place so you don't have that little tiny bit of a rattle in there. Sometimes these import machines, this hole is a little bit bigger uh, than the contact screw itself, <clears throat> and there's a little bit of vibration in there that stops that, and it protects the threads as uh, this contact screw locking nut presses against the contact screw and prevents the threads from being smashed. <clears throat> okay, uh, turn that down a bit more. Okay, now at this point. I'm, um, I'm going to uh, check my spring attention real quick, and we're setting this up as a liner, so I'm going to take my spring tension tool, okay, got to have one of these. You do uh, tune ups on your machine <clears throat> and place springs, you have to have one of these. Mm -hmm. They're all over the internet, about 45 bucks or something like that. And, uh, Okay, the, there's numbers on these gauges, okay, and they correspond to this spring going up or down. Okay, uh, so what I do is I take and press the tip of the spring gauge onto my armature bar nipple, and I press down just until that armature bar hits the front coil. Okay, and I'll read from a number back here. And right now I'm at 450 grams of tension. <clears throat> that is a, about the furthest you want to go with your spring tension for a liner. Okay, 400 to 450 is a liner, 300 to 250 is a shader. Uh, 
you know, we're at 450. And for the sake of the video, I'll just, I'll keep it right there. Okay, because it's, it's within, you know, the range that's acceptable. Uh, and what I'll do now is plug this machine in and just give it a quick, quick listen. Okay. Oh, before I do that, wide out. Okay. Nope. Take you some wide out and put it on the front of the armature bar nipple. Okay. Let it dry for a second. Okay. Okay. Plug it in. Turn it on, brother. Uh, let me get another spin out of my rear binding post here. You can use that tool in the first video, the needle bar. Or the, yeah, the needle bar, just cut the needle grouping off like I did in the first video. Really, really nice handy tool, okay? Okay, this is in here, okay? Okay. Okay, let me tighten my front money post below. Quick recap, we've taken this machine, which sounded like a 1972 wooden roller coaster, clack, 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 clack. Okay. What? You won your face. Yes. When I hold it up like this, I mean, I'm by my face. Pause, edit that whole shit out before. Okay. We've got the machine reassembled, and in the beginning of the video, I showed you how, or I let you listen to how this thing sounded like a 1972 wooden roller coaster, clack, 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 like a train wreck on top of a train wreck, okay? Uh, we've taken the coils, packed them with steel wool to help close the gap in the coil where the screw goes inside, the 832nd uh, screw goes inside the, the coil core itself. Oftentimes there's a gap in there that's not filled uh, due to, you know, shims being thicker uh, and things like that and shimming the coils that will cause that screw to go more or less inside the coil core. Uh, so we've put it with stainless uh, steel wool. Uh, we've raised the coils up to the proper height um, so that we don't, we don't get false strikes on the armature bar when it goes down. Change the springs, set the spring tension, uh, and now we're going to take a listen and hear how it sounds. 450 grams of spring tension. I put wide out on the front of this armature bar nipple for a reason. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, first let's listen. Okay. Wow. The turb runs. Okay. Doesn't sound like a rattle trap. Okay, big old rust bucket rattle trap. Chances are, if the machine sounds like it's gonna hurt, that sound gun's gonna hurt. <laughs> so. And we'll show you this also. We'll show you the voltage this machine is running at. And I'm not saying this is the voltage you're gonna run yours at. This isn't a voltage dem demonstration on what's the proper voltage to use. Do I set my machine to eight or nine? Okay, this is just to show you what I'm running this particular machine at for this video, okay? 6.7. Okay, not bad, six volts, okay? <clears throat> Your import machine right out of the box is not going to do that. When I had that rattle trap in the beginning, we're not turning on it six volts, okay? It's just not going to do it. That's what I want to know. These machines are not ready to go out of the box. What we've done right now is we've given it a, a, a tune-up. Uh, what I want to show you now is the Armature bar nipple is painted with whiteout for a reason. Okay, we're setting this machine up as a liner. So I've got my front contact post 
See, this is a slotted deal. It can be a liner or a shader. I've got it to the rear. Remember, the further back this contact screw hits the front spring, the more rigid um, the strike. Okay, just like the diving board. The further out you go, the more bouncy. The further back you go, uh, the less bouncy, the more rigid. Liners need to be rigid. Okay, uh, and the only thing that makes this a liner is that we set the spring tension as a liner. That combined with the fact that our short uh, front spring, as opposed to the the one that came on it, let me just see some. The one that came on this on this machine was much longer. Okay, uh, it was much longer. So in effect you're getting a more bouncy uh, strike out of the contact screw. And you can make that a, a liner, they say, just by changing this position on here to where the contact screw hits that front spring, and then you can make it a liner, you can move it forward and make it a shader. Just don't waste your time with that. Get a lining machine and get a shading machine, man. Uh, that's junk. Uh, <clears throat> because even where it hits, even sliding this backward and forward to make it a liner or a shader, that doesn't change the spring tension. That's what makes it a liner or a shader, not sliding this thing forward or backward, okay? Um, don't be fooled. Be wise. Okay, now, we're in the correct position with this to be a liner, okay? Sounds a heck of a lot better, okay? Let's see where we can get it to where we can mine with this thing. We turn this up a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm just sim simulating downward skin pressure and doing it in a way, increasing the voltage to where it doesn't stutter or stammer. It's nice and even. Okay, and we can probably do that with this particular machine. I'm gonna set it just to seven volts, okay? Okay, seven volts. Put your fingernail under there, see if it hurts. That kind of hurts a little bit. So, this white out. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Zoom in on this white out, where it's nice and clear. We got one circle. We got two circles. We got a figure eight, two circles, figure eight. Just where that figure eight those two circles start touching, just where they start touching. That's where you want that thing. That, combined with rear spring tension, combined with the, uh, you know, skin simulation, the pressure in the skin, that is gonna let you know that you're in the right settings and everything is, is right for shading, or for lining dope uh, for lining, okay? Um, I will also say that there's one other adjustment, or one other thing you can look at, and it's called this ghost spring, okay? And what it is, if the camera will allow me to, to show it, uh, it's gonna be the fact that, hang on one second. I can get it, okay. Take some of the stroke out of this. Didn't need that much stroke. You look at this at an angle, see there's one front spring. One front spring. When I turn this on, you see two front springs in there. Can you see the front spring? Yeah. The right angle? Mm -hmm. the two front springs? There's two front springs. One, I used to see two, the other one's a ghost. Mm -hmm. I let you know your machine's off and on in uh, equal amount of times that it's on, it's off, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and that's important because it lets you know your machine is, is pretty much balanced and it cycles. Um, you know, in, in one cycle, uh, you know, of 116 cycles per minute, it's off and on in equal amount of times, okay? Don't worry about all those numbers and stuff like that. Just get that figure eight 
Get that go spring at two, get your spring tension right. Do a test like, you know, downward pressure with the nail or right in here at a uh, voltage that's just gonna be enough to where that machine isn't gonna stall out or stop, okay? <laughs> get the right spring on your machine, short front spring, short rear spring, the more gap you have between the rear spring seat and the rear of this armature bar, the more uh, bouncy you're gonna, uh, you're going to be, the softer hit you're going to have also. It's another little quick deal. The further back and the further, clo the, the closer this is to the rear spring seat, uh, the more rigid that hit is gonna be, the more spring tension is gonna exist, okay? So, uh, also keep that in mind, okay? Coil height, coil gap, armature bar up, you know, in a straight line. Those are all important things to, to account. Now, that being said with springs, I'm gonna kind of move on to uh, another important piece of uh, equipment on a tattoo machine and that is your capacitors there's a couple kinds of capacitors right there's axial uh, and there's radial which have two leads coming at the bottom maybe a long one and a short one the long one is the uh, positive and short one is the negative uh, these are electrolytic capacitors okay and they'll they'll look like little soda cans and they'll have a directional arrow for the direction of flow uh, you know, if, and you can get them from, you know, electronic stores, uh, it'll tell you on there, 47 multifarad, microfarad, uh, electrolytic capacitor, this is axial, but what you want to look for on this is if you're going to start switching out capacitors to achieve different machine speeds. Uh, you want to, the bigger the number, the slower it goes. So, for example, if this is 100 uh, farad, uh, capacitor, it would be slower than this 47. Some of them come with 22s, I, I think. Uh, and those are super buzzing. You know, a lot of those import machines used to come with those, and boy, you'd be cutting people up just going to the tattoo. 47s are good move for lining or shadings. Take your time with it. Uh, I've got machines that I put 100 on that are for the right color pack in, and they're nice and slow for a deep, heavy hit. Uh, without tearing up skin, uh, saturate color and stuff like that. But, you know, okay, it spots together the passing the lesson. Okay. Now, you know, in these different capacitors I'm talking about, with a machine run without a capacitor, I want to show you an image, a still image here, where huh, somebody that tattoos in their house you know, or out of a backpack, brought me a machine in, an import machine, and, and uh, they said they blew their capacitor out, and they still tattooed, they finished the tattoo, okay? But their burn guard got so hot that it melted, and the capacitor blew out. Uh, first of all, I wanna say if you need a burn guard, which I've never heard of, uh, on your tattoo machine to prevent it from burning you, uh, you need to stop tattooing, learn about your equipment, uh, and uh, get some new equipment or learn how to fix that equipment because your tattoo machine should not burn you to the degree where you can't continue to tattoo and you need to put a burn guard on it. Nor should you ever blow a capacitor out while doing a tattoo and then finish the tattoo while the capacitor is blown out. Uh, good Lord, uh, people. Anyway, here's the still image of that. machine here is just set up to run without a capacitor altogether just for uh, demonstrating purposes will the machine run without a capacitor yeah it sure will it'll light your cigarette too look at those sparks flying off there okay uh, do not run your machine like this that's white lightning uh, no doubt you can do some arc welding with that probably at any rate uh, yeah it'll run without a capacitor I don't recommend it Learn your capacitors, learn what they do, axial, radial leads, voltages. Heat is the biggest uh, destroyer of capacitors. Uh, 
that thing gets hot from improperly tuned machine or trying to work it too hard or not understanding the machine at all, you will blow out a capacitor, in which case you need to start way back at the beginning. Um, on this next lesson, I want to show you some things about... This screw is hitting pretty flat on. It's not hitting at an angle or anything like that. It's it's hitting flat uh, on the con on the front spring. Okay, it's not just hitting the tip. This one is okay. You know, and that gives us we're still at two circles here. Uh, uh, you know, figure eight, two circles just barely touching, and we're still at the same you know voltage. This is a six volt. You know, you can turn it up a little bit. Okay. So anyway, clip cords and, and, you know, various other factors will make this machine run more or less efficient. You know, you get a voltage uh, on your machine that says 6.2, like this one does. And if you want to check that, I mentioned earlier a multimeter. You know, you can take this... Uh, machine turn it on and set it to voltage you know 20 volts uh, you know and turn this on and see that we're running at 6.10 okay pan over to the power supply okay and that's about right on okay back to me now that's about right on okay so there's no ver great variance between the power supply and what's going into uh, into the machine, you know, you can also check uh, after voltage check. Okay, now I'm going to show you one of my machines that I built. Okay, we're still at the 6.2 volts that we are on this uh, import machine. That sounds pretty hard for my machine. You know, I. I'd probably turn that down a little bit, but as you can see, what I was trying to get at earlier, the, co the contact screw on my machine is hitting flat. There's no filed down angled thing on there. It's hitting flat, okay? So that's what we want. Uh, okay, this is and white also, and we've got, you know, I'm gonna turn my machine down a little bit because that's just, way higher than it needs to be with this machine, see? And we're at 5 volts, hand over and look at this, 5 volts, okay? And that's my machine, that's my line machine, okay, that I built. Uh, that thing is going to line all day long, we're at 5 volts, okay? Uh, and I'm showing you side by side a comparison to import machines and custom built machines that actually have some kind of value to them. Uh, you know, um, and let me grab another liner out of here. You know, here's another one of my liners. Okay. <clears throat> it's a big difference. <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, I've got my coil shims in here. I've got coils that I wrap. You know, everything is good quality. Uh, lining, you know, speed bar, speed bar. Uh, speed bar. Um, there's certain characteristics that you can take and look at a machine right away and know what it is without ever picking it up. You don't need to ask, oh, is this a liner or a shader? You can tell because you know that this is a shader here. Shader because the armature bar is different, okay? Shader because the front spring is longer, okay? Uh, you know, liner because you got a speed bar on there. You got a short front spring, okay? Uh, you know, there's characteristics that you can look at and tell what a machine is before you pick it up. Uh, and, and that's something else that sets you apart, you know, in your knowledge that, that helps you, you know, build yourself up uh, in confidence and, and skill is being able to identify these different things. You know, this here is a liner, but it's a little bit longer front spring, but it doesn't matter necessarily because I've got my contact screw further back uh, so I'm not even using the front part of this spring. I'm bouncing off of right here, which is going to give me a rigid, a rigid bounce for a liner machine. Okay, this uh, shader, this contact screw, 
is hitting, you know, uh, at the uh, where it's where it hits flat. But I've still got some more spring to go. But I don't go there because it's not necessary. My spring tensions are right. My contact screw is hitting flat. I've got the good bounce. My armature bar nipple uh, is is showing me that I have um, two circles just barely apart, and I've got the uh, that ghost spring right where it needs to be. Okay, so um, all those things are, are you know you need to take into account when setting up your machine. Machines are are built for a particular purpose. Uh, you've got liners, you've got shaders, you've got color packers, you know, color packer. Uh, you know, um,